A hot topic and something that has a lot of momentum on the indoor cycling communities at the moment are these rocker plates. Today, I have my first ride, we have a chat about that, and I look at the overall experience of these rocker plates as they are today and where they might go in the future. Firstly, what a rocker plate is, it's an elevated platform or plate which we sit our indoor trainers on, which gives us a little bit of side to side rocking motion. Now, why would we want something like this? Well, outdoors, our bike is free to move. So indoors, they've always been locked in and they're uh, like riding a brick fence with a saddle and a set of handlebars on. Some have a little bit of flex, some don't have any at all. But what these plates actually do is allow you a lot more flexibility and it's said to simulate riding outdoors a little better. Does it? Well, let's find out. As there's many different ways to skin this rocker plate cat, there are many different variants of these rocker plates out there. Today, the one that I have to ride is called the Bob, named after its creator, Bob. To find out what the rider experience was with the Bob rocker plate, I performed two Llama lab tests. The Llama lab test involves a 20 minute steady state into a sprint and then into some over and unders. Typically then I look at the power meter data from both power meter sources. This today, I was looking more the user experience and what the feel was about, what was the ride experience about, but I also had two power meters on. So we can have a look at the data to see if there was any difference with the plate on or off. Alrighty, under the control here, this was my ride on a Kicker 17, no rocker plate, into a sprint. You can see the Kicker there, it moves around a little bit. Of course, it's going to do it under full load. But there's not a lot of sway in the bike at the top end. So there's the sprints and then into some over and unders. So that there gives an indication of not a lot of movement but there's still a bit of wiggle room there with the bike itself. Carbon frame, uh, the floor mat there, they do give a bit of give. Over to the installation of the Bob rocker plate. Now I'm not going to cover the entire inner workings of this plate, that's Bob's design which I've been asked to uh, keep under wraps for the moment. But you can see there it's uh, cable tied, which is actually quite sturdy with the cable ties. I thought cable ties wouldn't hold, they hold absolutely fine. There's a little bit of a groove at the back there so it won't slide forward or back. And you can see the side to side motion there are with some foam strips. That's all we'll reveal for now. Installation time, probably two minutes, if that. Yeah, first clip in and uh, a test of the range of motion. There's a bit of swing there. Next was, could I fall off the thing? How far can I put my body weight side to side to actually flip this thing? Um, rock steady, it really was. There was no way I was going to flip that over unless I really wanted to somersault off the thing. So under full load, under any sort of training that you'd be doing indoors, no problems at all with stability. Okay, now into the sprint. This is going to be a very interesting test on the sprint. quite what I expected. So I'm going to throw that up on instant replay and slow-mo. Okay, looking at the plate moving around, it's, I'd call squirming. It's not really rocking. So you can see the plate there moving, not quite in a side-to-side -side motion, more of a bit of a squirm, as if it was a frog sort of caught in a sock trying to get out, wiggling around. It's just not, really not what I thought for the rocking motion in the sprint. Now flipping over to outdoors, how does a bike handle outdoors? Well, you can see here, swinging side to side is a really natural thing to do on a bike. Up out of the saddle, the bike just swings. There's nothing between the bike and the road, I guess, to fall sideways. Here's a bit of analysis of that. So riding outside, the bike itself is free to fall in any direction. And it's the steering that keeps us upright. There's no resistance trying to, when the bike wants to fall, it just keeps going. Same goes for a sprint. The bike naturally wants to flip over. We just have to give it a little nudge and it goes over and we can get up on top of that crank and really rip out the watts. So let me show you that just here. You can see there, bike's rocking. As soon as we open up a sprint, we can just push a little bit on the bike and it's natural to get on top of it. 
right there. Where is inside? We don't have that same range of motion as we do outside at all. Outside we've got a full, huge arc, I guess you'd call it, where it's really natural to get on top of the bike and keep your head still, power to the pedals. Indoors here, especially for the sprints, it's just not the same. Why have I still got my helmet on? So there's some big differences there between inside and outside for sprinting and just general steering and moving around on the bike. What we saw there is a big difference between how the bob rocker plate handles out of the saddle and outdoors where the bike is free to move in all directions. It's a really, really interesting problem to try and solve and a tough one. So outdoors, your bike wants to fall over. That's its natural state to be on its side. Indoors, the bike wants to be upright. Now, with the rocker plates, they, the bike has a bit of movement, but again, still it wants to be upright. So pushing it off to the side requires a bit of force. Now, outdoors, to force your bike a little bit to the side to then get on top of the gear, and then vice versa, the pendulum effect, it's very, very easy to do, but indoors you've got to force it, which is unnatural. So the technique for sprinting indoors with especially the bob plate, um, I'll know more about others when I get a hold of those, but it's, it's not natural. It's very, very different. The technique is different. When you're at 12 o'clock or one o'clock outdoors, your bike just sort of snaps back. With this, you've got to push your bike off center to then have that. It's just very, very different. Now, this is really obvious when you look at other people who have used rocker plates indoors and filmed themselves, it doesn't really look that natural. There is an indoor technique to doing it, but it's definitely not the same as outdoors. The danger here is if you were to try and learn technique indoors with these rocker plates, especially for sprinting, it ain't gonna be the same outdoors. Outdoors, you've got momentum, you've got force, you've got accelerations, decelerations, you've got the gyroscopic effect of your wheels and things moving around and moving under you. Remember, your bike is still fixed to that trainer. All we're doing is just moving it side to side. And we saw with the bob there, it wanted to squirm a little bit. So it's more realistic, but it's not quite there. Okay, let's look at the steady state stuff and how that moves around. Okay, looking closer here at one of the over and under intervals, this is specifically the over interval at 450 watts. I'll hit pause because this is probably the most complex side-by-side -side analysis that I've done here on YouTube. What we've got on the left-hand side is the non-rocker plate interval done at 450 watts. On the right, you've got the rocker plate. Now I've split this straight down the middle. So you can see probably the saddlebag at the top there, which I conveniently left on with the little logo. You can see that move in both. And also the seat tube as well has that blue decal right down the center. So kicking that video back into action, what you can see here, there's probably not a lot between the two to split them, to be honest. 450 watts, 95 to 102 RPM. And uh, look, to be honest, there wasn't, really wasn't much between the two there. So indicating a few different things. My theory is that I'm pretty smooth on the pedals. That's a good thing for me. Or this bob plate just doesn't move a hell of a lot in that respect. Outdoors, you will get a bit of squirm. You'd call it at 450. Look, that's well above my threshold. So you do get a bit ugly on the pedals, but there wasn't a lot of movement with the bob plate at 450 watts. So to this point, the sprinting, mm, the steady state stuff, mm, over and unders, mm, yeah, give or take. It's nice having a bit of extra sort of wiggle room, I guess, on the butt, but nothing really special until I put the kicker climb on the front. This blew me away. Jumping over here to have a look at me going up Libby Hill. And we're gonna play the whole thing because I think it's fascinating. What we've got here is the kicker climb doing the elevation. We have the Bob rocker plate Doing, giving us a bit of side to side motion. But you can see here when the kicker climb kicks up and it reminds me to get out of the saddle and start doing some work, it feels really good. This feels fantastic. It's a slower, it's not an all out sprint, it's a slower sprint. And I think this is where it really comes into its own. So standing up here, you can see the rocker plate side to side. You can see the climb going up and down. You can see the front end is very loose. It's a lot looser on this. There's a bit of play there in the kicker climb, and that's brilliant. That's what you really need to make this feel more natural, especially out of the saddle, whereas outdoors, your handlebars move a bit. They're not just locked in. Anybody who's ridden a spin bike knows exactly what I'm talking about. It, the first thing you do is jump on a bike and try and wiggle the bars, and if your handlebars don't move at all, it feels really unnatural. So here's me giving it some stick. 
I saw I was within a, uh, a sniff of second place here, podium spot for the KOM. Winding it up over 600 watts there. You can see the plate doing exactly what it's designed to in this instance right here. Moving side to side, plus the climb going up and down. Absolutely brilliant. So that in itself blew me away. This match with the climb, absolutely loved it. The sprinting, it's gonna need some more sponginess. For the over and under stuff in the steady state, well, you don't really want much movement there anyway because doing those out on the road is pretty rock solid, but out of the saddle climbing was absolutely phenomenal. Hands down, worth doing it just for that. But I guess you need to climb at the same time. Prior to getting a hold of one of these rocker plates, I had a list of questions. Now I've got a few answers or a few insights. First up, does it feel real? No, it really doesn't. It feels more real, but not really real. You saw with the sprints there, it's really not the same with the sprint. Steady state, nah, climbing out of the saddle, you needed that kicker climb and a bit of loosening of the front end to make it feel like riding a bike, but more realistic would be the answer there. Did I generate more power with the rocker? No, I didn't. There's no such thing as a free lunch. I'm the engine, I'm the motor, I need to produce that power. Maybe a little bit in technique if there's a bit more practice, I guess, but both sprints on those topped out at 1150 watts, so one for one, exactly the same. Is it an essential addition for your indoor training? Mm, not really. Much like the kicker climb, if you had it and took it away, you'll want it back. If you never had it, yeah, maybe you'll never want it. But that little bit of wiggle is quite welcome, even though it's small. So I, I do like this and I will keep investigating different versions of these. But for me, indoors is about strength, force, and cardio. Outdoors is about technique and bike handling. These rocker plates are trying to introduce a little bit of bike handling and a little bit of bike technique indoors, but it is still a very different experience. So you're gonna have to get your butt outside, off that saddle and sprinting if you wanna become a good sprinter. Now onto the fun questions. Will it break my bike? No, it won't. What I've found over the years is indoors we have fixed cameras on fixed bikes and people are seeing the flex that's built into bikes. Bikes are built to flex. If they didn't flex, then they would break. So what we're seeing is a lot of people getting a little worried about their carbon bikes, having a bit of squirm to them. I've done many races and races where pros and ex-pros have ripped out massive bunch sprints that have left me in their dust for sure. But you can see these bikes flex like nothing else. Rico Rogers, local ex-pro here, has ripped out a sprint. I swear that bike was screaming for its mother. It was going to bust in half, but it happily held up and he won the sprint. So outdoors, these bikes are subjected to a lot a lot of forces that you don't see. Indoors, we just happen to see them. So will this break my bike? No, I don't think so. If this broke my bike, it would make some brilliant YouTube content. Stay tuned if it does, but no, I think we're good. Next question is, will it break my trainer? No, it won't break your trainer. As long as it's locked down and not slipping and sliding around, just that side-to-side -side motion had no impact whatsoever on the power readings and the accuracy of the kicker. There has been questions raised about the flywheel speed and the inertia or gyroscopic effect on the trainer, which makes sense. There's a bit of weight there spinning at high speeds. I had no issues. I really couldn't feel any balance or any turning or anything like that with these. Maybe something for the designers to look into at the higher end, but nothing that I could feel on this one. Finally, some future think about where I can see these things going and future development ideas for people to have. Well, first of all, we're gonna to have to know how far a bike swings side to side to replicate sprinting because just a little bit doesn't work. And the further you push the bike over, if the resistance gets harder and harder as it sort of falls over, that's not realistic either. So there's gonna be a fine balance between having the bike freely move like outside but not having it too sloppy for steady state. So to have more range of motion there, we're probably gonna to have to rise those plates up a little higher and really look at the technology used as the squishy bits, to use a non-technical term, springs or suspensions or dampeners on each side. So in a sprint, you want that to move freely, really fast, quick motion, and then in a steady state effort, you really want it sort of being a bit of a dampener so it doesn't really just flop you from side to side like that. I've been on some solutions for this way back in the day, where you'd be riding along and all of a sudden you'd sort of be riding along like this. So it needs to be rigid enough, but also I'm not quite sure what the solution is there, but that's what I see needs to be done for these units to be more realistic. Also, forward and back motion. You saw the bob plate there squirm. It didn't just go side to side. It sort of wanted to squirm and tilt and move and jump. In a sprint, you will be accelerating, decelerating over the pedal stroke, and there's a bit of momentum, a bit of jump in there. Can we have these plates maybe move forward and back a little bit? I'm not quite sure how to solve that one, but I think that might be something worth investigating. We put little rollers on, or we put little springs on this to jump it forward. I think that'd be worth investigating to make the experience really feel like what it is outside. 
So wrapping it up there for now, that has been a fun experiment. Not quite what I thought it was. Lots of potential. Out of the saddle with the climb was an absolute killer. But hmm, tell me your thoughts below. What do you think? As I've mentioned, not an essential piece of kit. Definitely worth checking out. It will be the future. Things will move this way. Manufacturers have to be looking at this technology and these solutions because, I mean, Wahoo have gone this way and the people have gone this way. I think there's going to be a convergence of the two. Okay, let me know below. When I get my hands on the next one, we'll do another video. Can't wait for it. All right, thanks for watching and uh, rock on.